Hello, hello. Welcome to the blog reading of The True Cost of the GAPS Diet. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Woo, I finally did it. I can't tell you how long I've been putting this off, analyzing the cost of a functional doctor versus a naturopath versus doing GAPS perfectly and getting a GAPS practitioner is just not my idea of a good time. Plus, it just hurts, you know? Looking back at all my credit card statements, seeing how much money I spent on things that didn't work, all the doctors that didn't help me or fucked me up even more, it's a sore subject. Plus, all the money that I spent on food. Yeah, GAPS normal is not your average grocery bill. We all know it's way above what a normal person would spend. The truth. But I faced it. I think it's important to know for me and for everyone because at the end of the day, we all have a bottom line regardless of what it is. We all live in physical reality. So we need to know what physical resources we need to gather in order to heal ourselves. Also, if we are going to spend all this money on our health, parentheses, being sick is so expensive. We need something that works. So here it is. I broke down the average month of what it costs to go to a naturopath, a functional doctor, and to do gaps perfectly and go to a gas practitioner. Not only will I show you what I spent on all these different modalities, each total cost, each of these total costs for one person, but I will also follow up each chart with a review of the healing progress I made during the time that I spent with that practitioner and how much each of these methods really helped me. All of the money is shown in US dollars. The ugly truth. So I'm going to start chronologically and we'll start with the naturopath who tried to chelate me through IV therapy. Chelation equals removing metals from the body by force. It was hella expensive. This is the doc who also fucked me up the most. He wanted me to come in and shoot chelators through my veins every week. This is how much that costs per month. Okay, so I will share my screen for those who are looking at the video. Um, here we go. Okay. The funny thing is, it's not funny, it's really just sad. Um, is that after the first time he chelated me, he damaged my liver. Um, hopefully not permanently. I had a horrendous adverse reaction after that initial time, so I never went back again. You can see, for those of you who aren't watching the video, the total per month was, this is including food, um, was $2,875.52 total without food um was two thousand and one hundred and twenty five dollars and fifty two cents okay so i never went back again after the first time but this chart it shows what it would have cost to go through his program so to get chelators and in, shot into my veins every um every week IV chelation is super dangerous, which I didn't understand at the time because our bodies store metals and fat tissue away from our internal organs to protect us. Um, when we shoot chelators into our veins or if we take them orally before our bodies are ready, all of these metals get mobilized and every chelator chelator has a half-life. Basically what this means is that a chelator is like Cinderella and at midnight or after its half-life is over, it just stops working. The carriage turns back into a pumpkin and the metals, wherever they may be, end up, up settling back into your tissues wherever they are. This is how you can fuck up your liver and your internal organs. Back on pharmaceutical medication to control my autoimmune systems symptoms. 
I was such a mess after this that I had to go on pharmaceutical medication for over a year to control my rashes and autoimmune system symptoms. Of course, I switched doctors and went to a functional doc who facilitated all this. She is the one who helped me recover from this unintentionally evil man. Yes, I know I'm biased and his stupid ways of treating people. This is what she cost. She, so you can see the total per month was $1,533.10. Um, total without food is $783.10. So she was a steal compared to this other guy. And even though I had a ton of metals in my body, we didn't take any action in trying to remove them because my body and my detox systems were not strong enough. She spent all of her time and energy while we were together trying to control my symptoms. And there were a lot of them. The most notable thing to mention with her is that I was getting tested all of the time, poked and prodded with needles, food sensitivity tests, allergy tests, testing the level of nutrients and vitamins in my body, testing for genetic mutations, testing my homocysto count, homocysteine count, my A1C, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Felt like I was getting blood drawn constantly. The nurses were nice enough, but I hated it. Still a conventional attitude toward healing. The other thing to mention was even though she was a natural functional MD, she still had conventional training. She still had the ability to write prescriptions. Um, She still had the ability to write prescriptions, which she did so regularly for me. The pharmaceuticals were positioned as a temporary fix to a permanent problem. Basically that I wouldn't have to be on these ever just until my rashes and autoimmune symptoms got under control. But she wasn't doing anything to get me off my medication except telling me not to eat eggs or dairy. This is where I learned the dangers of a functional doc who is not actually trained in nutrition giving nutrition advice. My dad still goes to this doctor and it seems like every year he can eat less and less foods. She takes them out one by one and poses this method as a solution to his problem. Obviously as a gas practitioner who is focused on adding foods back in all the time, this troubles me deeply. But anyway, so I was on this antifungal for over a year that is famous for causing liver damage. This was to control my symptoms. Um, this was especially not helpful to the damage that I already had. My uh, previous partner's mom, who's a nurse, told me that after the fact that people are not supposed to be on this medication for more than three days. Again, I was on it for over a year. Time to rebel. <laughs> so by the end of my time with her, I was feeling better and more ready to be on my own. Long story short, I was feeling well enough to be defiant. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah. And I forgot to mention that my past partner, bless his heart, was giving me B12 injections two times a week during this entire time. I was with her for over a year. It was traumatic for both of us. <laughs> These shots did make me feel so much better, but at the same time, I hated the process. I think we both did. So I was ready to try something new. This whole time I had been on gaps in addition to the therapies that my parents were willing to pay for. I found that the doctors I went to had heard about gaps, but later realized that that didn't mean that they understood it. Grocery store spending. So during this time, I was managing the wellness department at a health food store and then got promoted to nutritional health coach midway through. I got a discount and uh, with the combination of Dr. Natasha's words in my head as my mantra, never economize on food. I spared no expense. 
I was in a grocery store pretty much all the time and bought whatever I wanted. This was over a period of a couple of years and I do feel like it helped me and that I never felt deprived. This is the first time in my life where I wasn't yo-yoing a size and ever since my teen years, I would expand and I would shrink over and over again. When I stopped economizing on food, this stopped happening. And now I can't even believe I'm saying it, but I've been relatively the same size, give or take natural subtle fluctuations for the past three years. Fuck going up and down in size all the time. That is in the past. So yeah, I want to mention that I did not have access to my exact past food expenses because they were on a debit account that I no longer have. However, I remember spending about an average of $7.50 per month on groceries during this time in my life. This is in US dollars, by the way. So even though I had been on gaps for years, I was doing it wrong. <clears throat> I think I was just doing the typical thing of what people do on full gaps, getting all my food at the grocery store and not quite getting it right. I wasn't making my own ferments. I was drinking store-bought goat, kefir, and kombucha. Both are absolute no-nos. And just eating a lot of salads with primal kitchen dressing when I didn't have time to pack my lunch. Again, not ideal. Um, now that I know what I know about gaps, I don't even count this time as being on gaps because I was missing such a huge part of the picture of what eating nourishing food actually meant. Actually figuring gaps out. Cut to, <clears throat> excuse me, I break up with my functional dog <clears throat> and go on gaps intro for the first time since getting off my shiny getting my shiny new GAPS practitioner certifications. A month into intro, I'm already off that stupid, expensive, liver-damaging antifungal I have been trying to get off of for over a year. I also got off all my B12 injections. Teaming up with Becky Plotner, I could really get GAPS right. I fought with my parents because of this and then ended up going to we ended up going to therapy for months. They wanted me to go to a real doctor, but I was done with those. I fought for my right to choose my own practitioner, a gas practitioner. Becky, the woman who helped me save my own life. I was terrified of how much I spent on food during this period of real gaps because it was so much more focused on food, literally making everything from scratch, getting it from local farms. None of this Teton water ranch pre-cooked sausages or primal kitchen dressing, primal kitchen dressing bullshit. Real food that I made myself in my home every single time, rendering my own fat, making my own kefir, sour cream, fermented vegetables and brines, kombucha, etc., etc. This stuff worked way better than supplements. Though I noticed I spent roughly the same amount on sups because of the fermented cod liver oil I was taking every day. Not in a capsule. I was drinking it from the bottle. Ha ha. Capsules are a thing of the past for me and good riddance for that. So actually saving money on food when I got gaps right. Uh, what I realized focusing so much on the quality of my food that the grocery store was not enough. Uh, was not good enough is I ended up saving over $200 on groceries a month buying food from farmers. So yeah, the average I spend on food per month is under $550 versus the $750 I was spending when I was half-assing gaps. Still a lot by today's standards, but I gotta say this is the healthiest I've ever been in my life. This is the most success I've ever had with any kind of healing protocol. And I get to buy food from people, not grocery stores, which are horrible to work for, by the way. Even if you had the best job there, which I did, margins are really low in grocery stores. It's not a sustainable model. It makes it virtually impossible for them to treat their employees well, even at the good stores. So now I get to buy food from really beautiful, inspiring farmers who are passionate about what they grow. Anyway, my life is so much better now and the food tastes so much better. So here is the breakdown of what I spend on gaps. So you can see the total that I spend on gaps. 
is at my sickest and most educated is a thousand dollars and seven a thousand and seven a thousand dollars seventeen so a thousand and seventeen dollars and fifty eight cents a month um this was also when I was a GAPS practitioner, so I did not need as much direction. So I also calculated it for someone um, that needs to learn more and is just starting out, probably the minimum you would be spending is $1,307.57 or 58 cents a month. My total without food. Um, so these, those were the totals with food. My total without food was 475, around $475. Um, somebody who's just starting out doesn't know much. Their total probably, it, I estimated to be around $775. Um, the average food cost when I was buying food from farmers was $532 per month. You can look um, at the link below if you want to see all of the charts together for this information. The real obstacle on GAPS. I think the real obstacle with GAPS is learning how to do it correctly because the book literally can't tell you everything. Practitioners can't even tell you everything. I had been on GAPS for three years and done intro three times before I started to really understand how to do it right and get the depth of success that I have. You can see the full list of what I've healed here, but to give you a brief overview, being able to work again, being able to leave my house again, being able to go on walks again, curing my insomnia, healthfully coping with Lyme symptoms and PTSD, passing thousands of parasites, passing hundreds of gallstones, healing true food allergies such as eggs and dairy, and being able to cure my nut sensitivity as well. Not being addicted to sugar or binge eating at all anymore. The list goes on and on. The solution. My solution to there not being enough accessible info about how to do gaps correctly was to make a series of videos for my clients. There are 14 of them that show how to make me stock, do enemas, make fermented brines, why all of this stuff is important, etc., etc. This totals to about eight hours of footage and they're spaced out over a period of four weeks to help you prep for gaps in a timely manner without getting overwhelmed. My clients watch all these before we even meet for the first time. That's how important and imperative this info is. Like, I don't even want to talk to you until you know all of this. <laughs> My grand plan is to sell these videos both as a package and individually so that you don't need a practitioner to get the most basic stuff right. Currently, they are being reviewed by the GAPS team for accuracy. Dr. Natasha's son is reviewing them. Pinch me. Though, Becky, my personal GAPS hero and mentor and expert told me that because we've spent so much time together, she bets most of it is right. Thanks, Becky. She's also in a few of my videos. And then after they, the GAPS team proves everything, I have to figure out the technology. So it may take a while for all this to become accessible to the public. However, if you are itching to know right now and want to fast track this process, send me an email and we'll see what we can do. You can see my email on my services page. Confirmation that GAPS was the most affordable option. What I realized is that GAPS gave me my life back and it was also the most economic option. I was so ill at one point that I couldn't leave my house for two months straight. Literally, I didn't leave. So spending an average of 1017 per month to heal myself, this included food as well, that was a hell of a deal. And not to mention that my chelation costs around $10 a month versus 1600 and that it is much safer. Of course, there are upfront costs like investing in kitchen equipment, buying a whole or half animals from farmers. This is a big expense up front and then the meat lasts for over a year and getting a chest freezer to put it in. But as you can see, comparing my grocery store costs to my farmer's costs, these investments did pay dividends over time. 
I want to disclose with the farmer's market and butcher costs that these fluctuate, but that is the general amount I have found that I spend every month. Whatever works best for you. I think the most important thing in deciding which healing modality to try, the practitioner that you're working with, etc., is that all the time, money, and energy that you throw at it will end up working, will end up paying off because Healing yourself is hard enough when you are doing everything right. See fuck the healing pretty picture for more info. Ha ha. Your life is too precious to keep doing and investing in things that don't work. Being a sick, being sick is expensive regardless, but for me I found so much hope in the fact that I can throw money at this and get better versus going to a ton of doctors that can't help me and only make me worse. I found that healing was possible for me and that it did cost a chunk of change, but it was well worth the investment. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed, and um, if you want to see the full written article, I will link it below. Again, all of the things or links that I referenced are in the full article. So I wish you luck. Um, with your own process and healing yourself and just want to empower you to make the best decisions for you and your body and giving you all the information that you need to do that. All right. Ta-ta for now.